All right, so these are uh, some of the um, some of the stuff that I'm gonna work out for AP11. Uh, this is for my calc students. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and work out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten problems, and I'm gonna go pretty fast because of the. I just don't want to spend too much time recording, but um, feel free to slow it down, to pause it, and then if there's any other you know clarifying questions that you have, you can always ask me in class as well. Okay, so number one. Uh, we're given a function f of x equals x squared plus 5x plus 6 over 2x squared plus 7x plus 3. Um, I kind of know where this is heading already, so I can just go ahead and factor this um, just so I'm kind of ready to go. Let's see, 2x plus 1, then x plus 3. Okay, so there's my function. So part A asks, uh, state the values for which f is not continuous. So where is f discontinuous? Now, as I mentioned before, you have to have, you know, whenever you see continuity, you want to think continuous, you want to think about continuity. So f of a being defined, um, the limit exists, and then ultimately that these two are equal to each other. Right? All three conditions have to hold, and when that does, then we can say that they're continuous. So a good starting point for us would be to look at this function and to ask, when is it undefined? And that's when the denominator equals 0. So when 2x plus 1, and then when x plus 3 equals 0. So we know that x equals negative 1 half, and x equals negative 3 are discontinuities. Okay, And... Um, and yeah, that would be our starting point. Now, um, just to just to add on to this a little bit, I mean, this is not part of your homework, but the fact that the x minus three, x plus three, and x plus three, the fact that these guys can cancel out, right? That tells us that this is a uh, uh, it's a removable. Okay, it's a whole, and then the x equals negative one half is a vertical asymptote. Okay, so that's part A. Part B: Evaluate the limit as x goes to negative three. Okay, so part B, evaluate the limit as x goes to negative 3 of f of x. So already we can kind of see that this would give us 0 over 0, an indeterminate form, so we can um, factor out, and then ultimately we are finding the limit as x, as a, uh, x goes to negative 3 of x plus 2 over 2x plus 1. Right, so that becomes negative 1 over negative, six, negative 5, so 1 fifth is our limit. Okay, show your work. So the, the work that you would have to show is you want to show the indeterminate form. Okay? All right, part C. State the equation for the vertical asymptote for the graph of y equals f of x. So part C, so vertical asymptote. So the equation would be x equals negative 1 half. And then part D, uh, state the equation for the horizontal asymptote. And so for the horizontal asymptote, we've got to find the limits as x goes to infinity and negative infinity of each of these guys. And I guess if I can just erase part A, and then I'll just work out the limit as x goes to negative infinity. Um, of x squared plus 5x plus 6 over 2x squared plus... 7x plus 3, and then um, I guess just once I'll, so you would get, well, okay, I'll skip a step. So divide both numerator and denominator by x squared, so 1 plus 5 over x plus 6 over x squared, all over 2 plus 7 over x plus 3 over x squared. You plug it in, these guys are gone, and so you're left with a limit of 1 half, which tells you that your horizontal asymptote is y equals 1 half, okay? So that's part D. And then negative infinity is going to actually give us the same thing. It's going to lead us to the same answer. So uh, one horizontal asymptote of, of y equals one half. Okay, so you show all of that, that's full credit. All right, that's number one. Number two. Okay, number two is not as big of a, of a concept. But the only thing I would say about two is that um, you just have to interpret it part by part. So for example, limit of x goes to one of f of x plus four. Right, you want to interpret that as limit as x goes to 1 of f of x plus the limit as x goes to 1 of, of, um, of 4. 
right? So when we look at f of x, the uh, limit as equals to 1 looks like 2. And then, and then for 4, so 4 is just the graph of 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is a graph of 4. y equals 4, or f of x equals 4, right? Or g of x equals 4. So as it goes to 1, it will be 4. Okay, so the answer for number 1 is 6. Uh, part A is 6. Part B, we have 5 over, so same thing, limit as x goes to 3 of 5 over the limit as x goes to 3 of g of x. So 5 over... Okay, so for this one, um, okay, for this one, this is a DNE. Okay, because 3, it looks like it's only, it's, there's only a one-sided. There's no... So uh, uh, there's no from the right. Okay, I think I would roll with that as the answer for that one. Part C, so you just multiply them. So let's see, f of x would be 2. And then g of 2 would be 0. So 2 times 0 is 0. And then letter D. Um, oh, boy. Okay, so f of x over... Okay, so it's just part by part. So f of 1 from the left would be 2. And then g of 1 from, oh, I'm sorry, that's not, that's not right. Okay, so f of 3 from the left would be 0. And then 3 from the left for g would be 1 minus 1. Okay, I think I would roll with that as the answers. I actually don't have the, the, uh, the answer key, but um, I think that's what I would go with. Okay. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, we could talk more about that. Uh, number three. All right. So this one, if I can just jot down the uh, the the table that we're given. So zero, one eighty, three, one seven four, four, one seven two, six, one six eight, eight, one six four, and then nine, one six two. Okay, so there's our chart. All right, part A, evaluate the limit as x goes to 4 of t of x. Okay, justify your answer. Okay, so for this one, we want to look at the left side and the right side, and we want to see if they appear to be approaching the same thing. All right, so it looks like we're going from 180 to 174, so that's a deduction of 6. That's a deduction of 2. And then from here to here, we're getting deducted by 4. From here to here, it looks like uh, or it's, it looks like it's a growth of 4, a growth of 4, and a growth of 4. Okay, so um, what I'm seeing here is that on the right side, it's, it looks like it's linear. It's like leading up to 172. And then from the left side, it looks like it's kind of a, uh, let's see, down by 6 and down by 2. So it's some sort of exponential decay. Okay, if you catch what I'm, I'm saying. So maybe something like that. So that's what it appears to be. So from the left and from the right, you know, I would, I would say that they are both approaching 172. Okay, and then you would kind of justify explaining that. So on, on the right side, it looks like a linear... And then on the left side, it looks like an exponential decay. Uh, uh, exponential? I, I don't know if that's the right term. But it looks like some sort of decay, okay? Where it's getting sm smaller by 6, smaller by 2. All right, part B, average rate of change. So um, from 3 to 8. So average rate of change from 3 to 8. So it's t of 8 minus t of 3 over 8 minus 3. So t of 8 being 164 minus 174, all over 8 minus 3. So negative 10 over, ne over 5 is negative 2. Okay, so that's, a, that's the average rate of change. I include units. Okay, so negative 2 degrees per, uh, per minute. Okay, so negative 2 degrees Fahrenheit per minute would be the answer for part B. Okay, part C. All right, so 
oh, so part C says, identify the shortest interval during which there must exist a time X for which the temperature of the T is 166.5. So 166.5 degrees looks like it would, it would pop up right there. So the shortest interval would be from six to eight. Okay, because that's 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 the only data that we're given there. Okay, and then letter D, use the data to find the best estimate of the slope of the line tangent to the graph of T at x equals A. Okay, so line tangent, good stuff. Um, <clears throat> All right. So line tangent to t at x equals 8. So at x equals 8, we know that it's 164 degrees. So this is our point. And then now we just need a slope of a tangent. Right? And to find the slope of the tangent, we haven't learned how to find derivatives yet. We haven't learned how to find instantaneous rate of slope yet, instantaneous rate of change yet. And the only thing we know how to do is average rate of change. And once again, to do average rate of change, we would use the closest terms to 8, which would be the 6 and the 9. So we would do t of 9 minus t of 6, all over 9 minus 6. So that would give us um, 162 minus 168, all over 9 minus 6, which would be negative 6 over 3, which is negative 2. So the slope of my tangent line would be 2. So if I use y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, then I can just put everything in. So y minus 164 equals negative 2 times x minus 8. And then eventually I can simplify that, that out to get, a, to get a y equals mx plus b answer, okay? Or I could just leave it like this, it's up to you. All right, that's number three. Number four. All right, find each of these limits. All right, so limit as x goes to infinity of... Okay, so uh, you see everything there. Let's go ahead and divide it all out. So 3x by um we divide each the numerator and the denominator by x to the third because that's the highest power in the denominator right so minus six plus okay one over x minus one over x squared minus one over x cubed all over two minus oh i'm sorry i did not see that okay so you know what let's just jot down the problem first and I'm trying to go too fast here. So minus 6x to the third plus x squared minus x minus 1 all over. Okay, and then let me rewrite this as this. Okay, and why did I rewrite it? Because I noticed that the highest power term in the denominator was actually written second to throw us off. Thank you very much for that. And so we divide everything out. So we end up getting 3. And then you know what? Everything from here on out doesn't really matter. Okay, because the x's are on the bottom, so you know it's gonna it's gonna um, it's gonna become zero. So negative nine plus two over x, and then minus five over x to the fourth, and then we're finding the limit as x goes to infinity, and so we plug that in and see it just all, it just all disappears. So the only thing left, the answer to that would be negative one third for our limit. Okay. All right, part B. Uh, the limit as x goes to zero. Of, okay, so this looks already like a rationalizing one, but let's just uh, write it out just to make sure. And yeah, if I do a little test here, I can see that it's going to be 0 over 0. It's indeterminate, right? So I do need to rationalize. And how do I do that? I multiply top by root x plus 5 plus root 5, and I do the same to the bottom. Okay, and then when I do that, I get x plus 5 minus 5 all over 5x, x plus 5, plus root 5, and then the 5s are gone, and then this becomes 1 over 5, x plus 5, plus root 5, like that. Okay, and then my x is also, my x is also cancelled out. And then when I plug in the limit there, Okay, when I plug in the limit there, I end up getting 1 over um, 5 times 
Okay, so five, two root five is what it looks like. Okay, and then if you wanted to do a little bit more math there, the, this will teach you to root, root five over uh, 50. Okay, so that's part B. Part C. All right, limit as x goes to zero of two minus two cosine squared x all over x sine x. So already I, I can probably guess that this would be, let's see, so two minus two cosine squared is zero all over zero times sine of zero. Okay, so cosine of zero is one. And then sine of zero is uh, sine of zero is zero, so this is zero over zero indeterminate. Okay, now I know I didn't talk a lot about trig functions, about uh, simplifying trigs. So one way to do it is to have all the identities that we know of, and then um, to to simplify. And then another way is to do something called L'Hopital's, which we'll learn in the future. And actually, in this case, or and then the wor the worst case scenario is to always um, just to graph. But in this case, what we can do, um, so I kind of, you know, you can kind of see it. So 1 minus cosine squared of x over x sine x. And then this should trigger for, for some of us the identity that sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So then this would actually just be uh, 2 times sine squared over x sine x, and then this is a lot uh, nicer. Oh, I see what happened. So then this becomes 2 sine x over x, okay. And so you plug it in again, and then you would get this, you know, another, uh, another indeterminate form. Right, but what we discussed last time uh, in the past was the squeeze theorem. Right, and so this right here is a squeeze theorem candidate. Okay, and then we saw that that guy, as you approach zero, goes to zero. Because remember, we had the two oscillating things that go down, and then th like that. So we knew that there it was approaching zero. So this actually actually equal to zero. So that means that two times zero is zero. So all that worked to say that our limit is equal to zero. Okay, and then letter D. Um, the limit as x goes to negative 2 of 5 over x plus 5 over 2, all over x plus 2. So, you know, let me do a quick check. Negative 5 halves plus 5 halves over negative 2 plus 2, so indeterminate. All right, so we got to manipulate a little bit. So let's see. Let's put them under the same denominator. So 10 plus, well, no, not 10. Um... 5x plus 10 all over x plus 2. And then this can be 5x plus 10 all over 2x times x plus 2. And then this can be 5x plus 2. There we go. 2x, x plus 2. We factored out. Okay, so then we're just finding the limit as x goes to negative 2 of 5 over 2x, which equals 5 over negative 4. And that's our answer for number. That's our answer for number 4. Okay. All right, um, number five. So the position function s of t equals negative 4.9t squared plus 396.9 gives the height in meters of an object that has fallen from a height of 396.9 meters after t seconds. Explain why there must exist a time t. Okay, so there's a time t between one and two. Okay, at which the height of the object must be 382 meters above the ground. Okay, so this should trigger for us intermediate value theorem. Okay, because of this thing right here. This thing is like a dead giveaway. And then this is kind of a... So notice I paused because I was kind of thinking about it, but um, it, it's kind of a dead giveaway. And the the rule for the IVT... Um, uh, so 
Well, let me see here. So we have S of T equals negative 4.9 T squared plus 396.9. Okay. So one thing we can do is we can start by... Um, we can start by showing what S of 1 equals, and then we can start by showing what S of 2 equals, because those are our two endpoints, our two intervals. So negative 4.9 times 1 squared plus 396.9. Let me just grab my calculator here. So um, 396.9 minus 4.9 is 392. And then SF2 would be negative 4.9 times 2 squared plus 396.9. So if I just type that into a calculator, negative 4.9, open parentheses, 2 squared plus 396.9. There's 377.3. So you would look back at your notes on IVT and just in a nutshell, because, um, because SFT is continuous, um, uh, because the S of 2 and S of 1 are not equal to each other. Um, and then, uh, what were the three conditions? So because of, because of that, um, we know that between 1 and 2, uh, we know that between S of 1 and S of 2, there must be some value k, so 382, so that um, some uh, x value between 1 and so that some x value between 1 and 2 would give us that answer, okay? Hey, so that, that's, that's kind of in a, in a nutshell, okay? But I'm just, you know, so IVT holds, IVT basically holds here, okay? All right, part B. Uh, find the time at which the object hits the ground. So that's kind of more of a physics problem, but that's when S of, Z, S of t is equal to 0, and then you just solve that out. So it's a quadratic equation. Part C, find the average rate of change. So I think I've already done that, okay? And then part D, uh, evaluate the limit. Okay, and so let me go ahead and limit as, as t goes to 3. Okay, so um, S of... Uh, oh, oh, I see. Okay, so if I put in three there, three there. Okay, so it's uh, it looks like another indeterminate. Okay. Um. So show the work that leads to your answer. Include units. So negative four point nine t squared plus three ninety six point nine minus. Um. Okay, I think one place that I would start is by, well, so that's going to cancel out. So that'll be gone. Um, 4.99, let's see. So 4.9 times 9, so 44.1. So negative 4.9 t squared plus 44.1 over team. Okay, so this would give us actually an indeterminate form. And I'm, what I'm wondering is, does that actually divide out? And it, it might. It does. Okay, Woo. there we go. So this becomes limit as t goes to 3 of negative 4.9 t squared minus 9. There we go. Nice. And then from there, it's just a, a nice factoring and simplify. Um, and then you get your answer. So limit as t goes to 3 of negative 4.9 times t plus 3. Okay, and then you just plug it in. So 6 times, ne so negative 4.9 times 6. So your answer is negative 29.4. Okay, so that would be our answer for the for the limit. And then include the units. So uh, distance over time. So meters per second. Okay. All right, parts number 6. All right, f of x equals, in piecewise, ax squared plus x minus b, ax plus b, and then 2ax minus 7, and then x is less than or equal to 2, 
2 is less than x, which is less than 5, and then x is greater than or equal to 5. So there's our three pieces of our piecewise function, and a lot of a's and a lot of b's in there. Find the values of a and b such that f is continuous everywhere. So for it to be continuous, our... our um, so continuous, so, say, so that theorem, right? Um, so f of a is uh, f of a is defined, limit exists, and then they're equal. So those are the three conditions. So once again, we want it to be um, defined and we want the limit to exist. That means that from the left side and from the right side, they both have to go to the same thing. And then from the left side and from the right side, they both have to go to the same thing. So in other words, we can set them equal to each other. So ax squared plus x minus b has to equal ax plus b. And then, um, and, and then on the other hand, we can say that ax plus b has to equal to 2ax minus 7. OK, and so um, well, no, you know what? Let, let me take let me take a step back. So we're considering, okay, so we're considering two cases. So the first case one. So case one is at x equals two. Okay, we want to consider the left-handed limit and the right-handed limit. Okay, so there we go. So limit as x goes to two from the left of f of x has to equal to the limit as x goes to two from the right of f of x. So from the left, we would get um, uh, a times 2 squared plus 2 minus b has to equal to a times 2 plus b. So in other words, 4a plus 2 minus b has to equal to 2a plus b. So there's my first equation. And then my second equation is case 2 when x is equal to 5. So limit as x goes to 5 from the left has to equal to the limit as x goes to 5 from the, from the right. And then when I put that in, I get 5a plus b has to equal to 10a minus 7. OK, so two equations, two variables, a and b. And if I work this one out, I get b equals 5a minus 7. So that's a very nice substitution problem into here. And so I can rewrite that as 4a, and you know what? Let me write it here. So 4a plus 2 minus 5a plus 7 has to equal uh, to 2a plus 5a minus 7. So 4a minus 5a is negative a plus 9. 2a plus 5a is 7a minus 7. Negative 8a equals negative 16, a equals 2, and then b equals 3. So there's my answer for part a. All right, part b, very simple part. So part b says evaluate the limit as x goes to 3 of f of x, and then a equals 2, b equals 3. So that means, um, so that means I would look at the second piece. I would look at the piece that says ax plus b. So that means the limit of x goes to 3 of 2x plus 3, which would lead me to an answer of 9. That's part b. OK, and then part c. Uh, it looks like another one of those limit limit ones. So part C, let g of x equals f of x minus 1 over x minus 1. So find, evaluate limit of, so limit of x goes to 1 of, of g of x, which is basically asking us to evaluate the limit as x goes to 1 of, um, 2x squared plus x minus 3 all over x minus 1. And I bet you this is a L'Hopital, yep. L'Hopital's rule, I, I mean, it's an indeterminate form. So limit as x goes to 1 of 2x, x minus 1 plus 3. All over x minus 1, factor, 
And so we end up getting an answer of um, 2 plus 3, which is 5. Okay, that's part C. All right, first page done, number 6. Okay, number 7. Okay, thank goodness. Uh, it's uh, some multiple choice questions. Okay, I'm going to just talk about it. I'm not going write, to uh, write it down, but number 7, the graph of the function g, which of the following is true? So the limit as x goes to 2 of g of x equals 1. So we would agree with that. Okay. Yes, we absolutely agree with that. And then part number two, limit as, okay, g of x is one, but g of two is three. So we would not agree with number two. Okay, so we disagree with that. And then part three, uh, g is continuous at x equals three. We would agree with that. Yes, g continuous add x equals 3, so we agree with that. So the answer is 1 and 3 only, so that's the answer for that would be C. And then number 8, the graph of the function of f is shown above. The line x equals 1 is a vertical asymptote, okay? Which of the following statements about f is true? Okay, so part A, the limit as x goes to 1 equals infinity. So part A is false. Part B, limit as x goes to 3 equals 1 false because it's a jump discontinuity. The um, the left and the right, okay, so the left is less than the right, no, the left is higher, so that's false. And then part D, the limit as it goes to 4 does not exist, it looks like it exists, okay, because it's just a solid point. Then the part E, 0 from the right, 2, 3 from the right, 2, there's your answer, okay. Number 9, uh, define, okay, which of the following statements about F is true? So number 1, F is not continuous at X equals Four. Okay, so, well, we know, okay, so part one, we know that f of four is already eight because it gives it to us. But now what we're trying to figure out is, is the limit as x goes to four from the left? Well, okay, so it does a limit exist. So that's, that's what we want to figure out next. And the only other piece that's given to us is the piece on either side of eight, which is the same function. But when I... When I try to find this, when I try to find this, I'm going to discover that it's going to be zero over zero. So I want to factor and simplify. So let's try factoring here. So x plus eight, x minus four, and then x minus four, x plus two, and then the limit as x goes to four. That there we go. So we can do that, and then we end up getting twelve over. Uh oh, what did I write here? Uh, x. I don't even know what that says. Let me just rewrite that. So x plus 4, uh, x minus 2. Oh, x plus 2. Okay, so that's equal to 6. So that's equal to 2. And so the limit here exists as 2. And so this works and this works. However, my third condition that they're the same, that's where it's violated, and that's why 1 is not true. It's not continuous. Okay, and then number 2, the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x has to equal to 4. And that is not true because when I find the limit as x goes to infinity, it's x squared over x squared, which is just 1. So I have a y, horizontal asymptote of y equals 1. So that would not be true as well. And then part 3 says x equals 4 is a vertical asymptote. And that's not true as well. Okay, because it, it canceled out. It's a whole. It's a removable. So the answer to this question would be A, none. Okay, last one, number 10. The figure above shows three rectangles, each with a vertex on the graph of y equals 4. Okay, find the sum of the, the areas of these. Okay, so we haven't really talked about this, but... Um, okay, so... We're given that, we're given that, and then we're given that. So that was 3, that was 2, that was 1. And then the function here was, um, the function here, this one, was 16 minus x squared. So this is a great preview of Riemann sums, which is going to come uh, a little, actually, probably closer to second semester. But um, So find some of the areas of these rectangles. So uh, area of a rectangle is length times width or length times height, or base times height. We'll just use that base times height. So I know that my base for each of these guys is going to be 1. Okay, now the question is, what's the height? And to figure out the height, well, I know my heights are all going to be different, 
but it has to do with the points on these graphs. So for example, when I plug in 1 here, I know this is going to take me up to 16 minus 1 squared, which is equal to 15. So that tells me then that the height here is 15, from here all the way down. And then the 2, uh, and then the two would tell me that it would be 16 minus 2 squared, which is 16 minus 4, which is 12. So then this would just be 12. And then my 3 would tell me that it would be uh, 16 minus 9, which is equal to 7. So I have three rectangles, 15 by 1, 12 by 1, and 7 by 1, which is just a 15, 12, and 7 rectangle, which adds up to give me uh, 34 units squared. OK? So that's what I would get for the uh, homework. Um, I know that, I don't know, I feel like a good amount of it was covered, maybe not all of it uh, in class, but if you have any other questions, I can uh, answer for you uh, in person. So I hope that was uh, somewhat helpful.